Good afternoon and God bless you. Don't you touch that station. Don't you do it. I know this is Wednesday and I know it's 2 p.m. And you were looking for Bishop Albert Ray Thompson. But look at here, look at here. This is Pastor Sadie Thompson and it doesn't get any better than this. This is round two for Rise Again 2. We are, he is Risen World Outreach Ministries located in the beautiful city of Lafayette, Louisiana. And we just want to let you know that we are here and excited that you come to join us. And we are so grateful and we thank you today. Now, listen, I got all my preliminaries out the way because I have an awesome woman of God who has a lot on her heart and on her mind that she's going to share with us today. She's going to give us some nuggets straight from the throne of heaven that will encourage us, that will enrich us, and give us energy to go this run this race a little bit further. Without any further ado, Minister Hudson, good afternoon and God bless you. Well, God bless you, Pastor Thompson. Thank you so much. I am so happy. I, I, I wasn't sure of your official title. I didn't know if you were an apostle uh, uh, or a bishop. So don't get offended just because I said minister because I didn't know. Uh, bishop didn't give me the official title. So I'll stand corrected, whatever it is, my baby. <laughs> well, you know, we are all ministers because we minister to people. So that is not offensive at all. I am an apostle of the church, but... I, am, I apologize I am. again. <laughs> I give honor where honor is due. Oh, oh, that's, that's fine. I, um, minister means a lot to me because I've ministered and I've been ministered too. Amen. So that, that's the most important thing is to minister to people. That's what, that's what Jesus told us to do is go out and minister to people. So that's a great honor to be called a minister. Thank you. you, you thank you. And let me tell you, you are a beautiful young woman, and I know that's hard for some of these people to be see that to receive that uh, uh, rebuke. <laughs> you, know what? you know what? If you met me, you would think that you've known me forever. It's what's inside of me. Amen. Amen. I'm not on the outside, but I am the most friendly person, and I'm the most giving person. If I I meet you, I'm just ready to give, give, give. If it's, if it's a word or, mm -hmm. or if you want to go sit and eat or however it is, that's just how I am. And I've always been that way. Always. Well, when we get together, we, 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 will, we will mesh. Because I, I, I love all that. We can just go and just hang out and have some girl time. I'm ready for that. Amen. But before I'm, I'm we, yeah, but before we get to have some fun, we got to go to work. We got to get the work out the way, okay? So what are my first question to you is this. I want to follow instructions so I'll be able to come back again. Okay. <laughs> and it says, what do you see is the most overlooked problem in society that the church should address? And that is a good question because I'm going I'm to I'm 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 add to it. I'm going to add to okay. it. Is the, church, is, is the church really being effective? I have to play the devil advocate. All right. Because for a question like that, that implies to me something is missing, something is broken. There's, okay. there's, a, there's okay. a piece that's missing to this. And, and, and the anointing, it, 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 it makes you whole. It, 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 it heals you everywhere you hurt. So I, I got a problem with this. So I'm going to be quiet and let you expound upon that. Okay, and, and actually, my answer would be, you're saying outside of the church. I'm saying that the church is actually the problem. 
I'm yeah, I'm saying in the church, not outside of what we okay. Outside take care of it, it's spoken for itself. I'm talking about inside the church. Okay. It's broken. Inside what church. yeah, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Well, the, the church is broken and it's broken in different areas because it's some of us that this had that old school teaching mm -hmm. and we know how the church should be ran and, and how people should come in dressing. I'm not saying you're supposed to have on a, a, a thousand dollar suit every time you come in church. I'm not saying that. Yes, ma'am. But I have, I have uh, encountered um, in churches. I went to a church in Baltimore and a young lady was dressed like she just came out of the club. And she was an usher. I was going to say she might have. Yeah. She <laughs> she probably, and she was actually an usher of the church. I mean, back when we were younger, you were you would be sit down if you was dressed that way. You wouldn't be able to, to act in in any kind of uh, form in the church that way. Mm -hmm. But the church is broken. They believe that they have taken love, which is the greatest commandment, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong, but they have taken that and they have overruled God's teachings and his wrath. They forget that he has a wrath. So the church has taken love, which is patient and kind and, and, and sees no no wrong in people. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, oh, well, God accepts everything. He's, he's going to accept if you mm -hmm. kill somebody or if, you, if you're if um, you a homosexual or if, you, if you're um, killing babies or, or adultery. My and God. And he's going to say, oh, well, love will overtake it. But how many mm -hmm. times are we to, to keep coming back with that? To keep coming to God yeah. and saying, oh, well, your grace is sufficient. And his grace is sufficient. But are we taking love? And are we misusing it? That's my that's my question. Yeah, so. you, you're asking re rhetorical questions, but uh, I can yeah. truly say, yeah, 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 yeah. But I I want to I want to piggyback on it like this a little bit, and then I'm gonna let you finish okay. with it. You know, I, I've said it several times on my show is that a lot of the new churches now, the the, the thinking. Is not only do we want you to come as you are, but we want to make you so comfortable in your That's mess it. that we don't discuss sin. Sin is real. That's, That's it. We don't. Real. There's no discussion about sin. We just want you to just come, and we're gonna make you feel good, and then mm -hmm. you can leave. And I call it dry clean. There you go. <laughs> you ain't. Right. De ain't we ain't dealt with nothing. Yes. Nothing has been dealt with. You you just came and you heard a good story and you're good. <laughs> well, let me let, let me hit on what you just said. In, in okay. Isaiah four and six, it says uh, that a lot of us are so messed up in the mind is because we have a lack of knowledge. Well, and my people are, are destroyed from the for lack of the knowledge. lack of knowledge. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So we're destroying the church. By, by taking just little slithers of the Bible out. Come on. And then saying, hey, this is how you should act, and this is what you should do, and it's okay for you to do this. But in your heart, if you're a Christian, you feel that it's not right. Conviction should come. Yeah, conviction should come. You can't tell me that if I go and I go out and I sleep with a man and I'm not married to him, that, that if that conviction is not there, then that love of God is not there. You haven't met the man. That's true. You don't exactly. know him. You don't exactly. know him. You don't know and, and him. No perfect person. No, 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 no. We're not saying that. We're just yeah, saying we need to I begin to line up. No yeah. Person, so you know you go. You gonna fall in some kind of sin. Well, you are gonna practice it. I don't know if you're falling in it, but you are gonna practice. Yeah, Who teaches you? Practice. <laughs> you gonna practice? You gonna practice. There you go. You are. You are. You gonna practice it, and then you gonna say. You're going to either say, hey, God, I repent, or I'm just going to continue to do this because of your love. And that's not how I go. Mm. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, since you, you, you opened the door. Do you do you really believe, you, you, you alluded to it earlier, about all this love, is that they feel like because God loves you, that there's no consequences for the sin? There's no consequences because just, you know how the devil will tell you, or maybe he's just only talking to certain people, or go ahead and ask God to forgive you. He'll forgive you. But he don't tell you about the consequences of it. 
No. That's why they say sleep with your husband or sleep with your wife because you could get AIDS. That's the consequences of breaking that law. There you go. You drink alcohol and, and, and your liver is, is bad. That's the consequences yes. of that life. You know, so the consequences are there. Yes. But um, I, I know I can't say it uh, like that say anybody's name but a lot of these pastors which are really not pastors they're just motivational speakers but they it's, <laughs> to be a pastor you have to be and then, it's no way they don't say that out loud. loud don't say that out loud don't say that out loud Shh. <laughs> <laughs> but that is i mean what they're doing is they're teaching just the love of god and and what you can get from god and and, and the grace of God. Principles, principles, principles. Yes, but not teaching, not teaching those principles. Not at all. No, they're not, they're not opening people's eyes to their sin and the consequences of it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So everybody going to hell today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you don't repent and it's not really in your heart, then you're just talking. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. and, and then the, the, the last thing I was going to say about the church is that we have um, a lack of prayer. That mm. people forget about prayer. It's just something they do when they need something or when they want something or something's happened to them or somebody's sick. That's when prayer comes into their heart. Prayer should be something that is uh, every, like you can get up and take a bath and comb your hair and brush your teeth. Prayer should be the same way. That Amen. Should be something that you do every day. Amen. Well, let's. Can you break that down for some people? Because a lot of sometimes we Christians make God's principles so hard. Getting saved is hard. Getting yes. living right is hard. So it's yes. not. It's not very glamorous. So when you're telling someone who may. Um, have a spirit of rejection or abandonment and you talking about you're not doing this so you, they are medically put on the offense could you help explain exactly what prayer is simple well, prayer is a, is a direct way of talking to God and what a lot of people have that not that they've forgotten it's what they don't realize is is that God never ever stopped talking to men from back in, mm, the, in the morning. That's rich. That's good. That's good. But that's what good. What man did is he stopped listening. So that's our way of talking to God. That's our that's our um our internet to him or our Google or whatever you want to call it. I love Anything it. Anything that we have a problem with, we can get on our knees and we can pray to him. We can talk to him. Prayer is not just asking God; it's talking to him. I have an intimate relationship with. There him. you go. There and you it's go. So intimate that no man, I've been married twice, no man could ever give me that intimacy. Ever. Because it's a sense of, of love and peace that he gives me when I talk to him. And when he doesn't answer that prayer that I ask him for, I know that it's not for me. And it, yeah, sometimes it hurts. But every answer is not yes from God. I know that's right. I know that's right. Because it's wait. Yeah. And the hardest answer is the wait. Yes. <laughs> oh, he's going to answer yes, no, or wait. <laughs> the silence means wait. <laughs> if you don't know what that means, you didn't hear. Oh, you heard. You just went listening. Wait. <laughs> you got to wait. Till you get the revelation of what's going on around you. Yep. He's well, waiting on you, not you waiting on him. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. And, and the, um, a lot of these pastors that may be coming in as pastors, they have to know that prayer is the foundation of the church. Mm -hmm. I mean, you that's where the foundation comes from, is yes. from prayer. Yes. You can't start, as I've started churches, and I just couldn't just go in there and say, hey, we're going to build up a church, and we're going to take over this building and start a church. And no, it comes with prayer because everything that looks good is not good. Amen. So you might get a building this, and, and you go purchase it to sort of church. It might uh, have a lot of problems, or it, it might have a lot of plumbing problems. You never yes, know. yes, so yes. You have to, the 
foundation has to be prayer. Amen. Then you can do forget it. Yeah. Amen. The foundation. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I, that's that's good advice, especially to young pastors. It couldn't get any better than that. Okay, yeah. so we understanding. Oh, well, well, wait a minute. You said something about your prayer life. How critical that is. So, so my question again, being the advocate, do you think okay. the reason is that people are not praying because they don't know that maybe God is real? Oh, yes. That's, oh, I'm so glad you said that. Okay. Um, okay. I have, I have been on Facebook since 2007, and I have, in the last couple of years, seen pastors that I've followed. I mean, that follow their, you know, their yeah. um, ministry. Right, right. They have, turned, they have turned and said that they don't believe that it's God no more. That, oh, I um, saw one. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe yeah. it. I've, I've, and, and, I, I, you probably saw the same one I saw, but I've seen several, and I'm like, oh my God, what, what's happened? But then you go back to the Bible, and it says that it'll be a great fall in the way. Turn away from God. It's mm -hmm. gonna be people turning to Him, and it's gonna be people turning away from Him. A great fall in the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And it hurts my, it hurts my little heart so bad to see that because they don't know that they're in line for damnation. And who wants that? I, who wants to see any anybody mm -mm. go that way? Mm -mm. Hell wasn't made for us. No, it was not made for but us. But it's enlarging daily. I I can only imagine. But it's very Amazing. yeah. It's 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 horrible to know that once you've fallen in love, I can understand the struggle that pastors go through. Believe me, I understand. Yes. And there are a lot yes. of there are a lot of things that are on your plate. But yes. I have never ever thought about giving up on God? No. Mm -hmm. No. I, I've, I've lost my, I've, my yeah. mom's on hospice now. I, have, I take care of my mom. I left my job to come and take care of my mom on hospice. Mm. And of course I do whatever I can in ministry because I have six daughters that help me. But never have I said, you know, God, I'm so angry at you. Uh, that that my dad is dumb, or that this is happening with my mom, or that that mm -hmm, things didn't work mm -hmm, out with mm -hmm, the relationship, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. or in in a job or anything. It's just that that deep deep love that you have for Christ when you come to Him. It it can never really fade away if it was ever really there. That's I agree. I agree. It does get better. It's it's the process, and and I know what it is to take care of a sick uh, uh, a person that you love on hospice. Yes. And let me tell you this: people are living long on hospice. <laughs> they're not dying. They're not. They're not transitioning. When the doctor says, "Oh, we're putting them on hospice," you think that's a death sentence? Trust me, it's not. <laughs> I've seen people live five and ten years, and they're still on hospice. <laughs> <laughs> that when he was on hospice and he got up and left out of the place and he's been living ever since. That's and what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so don't take it. I know it. <laughs> and, and my mom, they gave her six weeks to six months. And what? It's been, almost, it's been like over a year and a half now. Hallelujah. And sometimes she gets something get around better than I do. Like, I know. Let me she, catch up with you. And but she you know, yeah, the devil, yeah. The devil will put in your mind yes. what, he, what he wants to, to bring you down. He'll bring you down. He'll try to bring you down. But it's up to you to say, no, I'm going to continue to pray for her. That's when prayer comes in again. Come on. I'm going to continue to pray for her. And I'm going to continue to believe something that the doctors don't believe. God gave them knowledge. We can't. They're only practicing. Yeah. They're not the healers. So, They're not the healer. Know. They're, they're healing. practicing me medicine. Yeah. They're not healing nobody. It's yeah. a science. And then when you get healed, they're the ones who are in, in awe. Well, we never seen anybody live through that before. <laughs> I know. I'm <laughs> they had that look on their face. Well, wait a minute. Let me get your number and everything because we gonna. I'm going to have to do a study on you. Let me get some of that blood. Let me... No, they don't know. No, and and don't get me wrong. I respect doctors. I res I respect all that years of discipline that they oh, have no. done, but they are not healers. They're practicing. They are the physicians. They are practicing, and I praise That's God. Right. And God has given them wisdom. 
Amen and amen. amen. But he's given us something greater. Yes, our faith. Has. Yes, he has. Gave, he's given us our faith. And, and trust me, my faith has been tested a many times. It's not faith I, unless it has been. If it hasn't been tested, it's not the real deal. I know. <laughs> I'm just saying. There you go. There you go. I'm telling you. I, I, I have been to live in a beautiful home to being homeless with my children. With mm, children. Six, so, you got six children, right? Six daughters. Ooh. Don't ask me. I mean, God got it. I home. know. I'm so glad it was you and not me. I couldn't, I, I barely got through with two. Six <laughs> with a, we probably wouldn't even be on air talking today. <laughs> You be visiting me. Yeah, I mean, out of six of them, four of them are, are um, um, ministers. I that's, bet. That's a blessing, too. And they all strong will, too. Yes, they are. <laughs> I thank God. I thank God for them. I do. Because what would I do now that I'm right at this point in time, leaving my job and, and having to come here and take care of my mom? Yeah. You know, I, everything fell on them, and they was like, hey, we had a We team. got you. We, we got you. That's one. That's a blessing. That is that truly is a blessing, and that that is also a remark that speaks volumes for you. What you taught them, they if they didn't have those principles embedded in them, they would they would not trust me, because children are the most selfish people I know. They would not stand. I got that baby one. That, that little, uh, what is it, midlife baby? Now, that one right there, I don't know how to handle her. You know, you, you'd be like, now, where did these new kids come from? Because this ain't the same kids I had before. They are selfish, and they, you know. They Very selfish. Me-centered. Me. It's all about me. What about me? Second Peter. That's what he said. He said they're going to be lovers of themselves. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm starting to see that out of her, and I'm starting to, to buckle down. So that's, what, that's something else we need to do as parents in the churches. You know, they say, oh, don't whoop your kids, don't discipline, don't do that. Well, oh, you, they gonna whoop you? You, 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 you wouldn't have made it in my house, my baby. You you, you, <laughs> you wouldn't have made it. You would have been calling the police, and I'll be doing... You would have been calling somebody. I, and I'll be doing prison ministry by right now. We'd be <laughs> praying to Jesus we're in like, the bar. Where's, 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 where's the oh, she doing prison ministry. Yes, she sure is, because she sure beat that child. She whooped that child behind. Yes, hey, she did. I'll, I'll, yes, she did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she did. You're not doing nothing wrong. No, no. And 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 the thing about it is it's a difference between a spanking and being abusive. That's two different things. That's yeah, that's, that's two true. different things. And you shouldn't you, and you should not discipline in anger because that's 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 you you know, and nobody getting nobody's learning from that experience. Nobody's learning from that. So, you know, it's a way to do everything. You know. Well, I'm well, I'm actually doing a series on on um, with marriages and and a lot of marriages that's how they break up they they get angry. Oh yeah. And then they 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 say something or do something instead of walking out the room or or you know going off somewhere. Then those words hurt. But you can't take the words back. That's the problem. Once they hit the air, that's yeah. it. Yeah. What did the Bible say about that tongue? He said that that it's the littlest member. Yes, and the hardest to turn. Ooh, but it creates so much havoc and chaos. It sure does. It sure does. That thing between your teeth and your gums, <laughs> it just, that tongue. Be, <laughs> he has it's a mind thing. of his own, a mind of his own, and you got to bring it under subjection just like your rest of the body members of the part. This is exciting. It's good to know that uh, the mindset on living holy is real because people are not teaching yep. holiness anymore and i feel like they feel that it's old fashioned old foggy it just old pentecostals just holy rollers it's what y'all what y'all down there for at the church all monday and wednesdays and friday night holy ghost service and then saturday choir rehearsal and sunday btu ytu all oh, every day so <laughs> A lot of people are turned off by the structure 
of the old church. I'll put it like that because the church yes. is still the same, but, but the messengers have kind of tamed the message or toned it down or even has ch perverted it in some cases where, um, and I won't name any names, where this particular person turned the church into a club, dark lights and couches wow. and what not have you and and then of course him being the center of attention so what can we say lovers of ourselves lovers of ourselves and denying and, and and the scripture tells us your heart your lips are telling me that you love me but your heart is far far anything you turn church into a club it's real mm -hmm. no that to me that's an abomination i'd be scared to go in there i'm gonna just tell you the truth I'd be scared. You, I'd be scared. You, that's just not, I'm just not going to have to, I'm, I'm not going to need to be able to visit there. That's just not going to work. I'd be like, where's the lights? Turn the lights yeah. on. They'd be like, baby, this is it. And I'm like, oh, I'm in the wrong place. This is not for what, me. What, well, what they're doing is reinventing the church. It's like, um, let's, let's make it how we want it to be. And I, I'm not saying that. It should look a certain way or whatever. No, no, no. Um, but I need to have a light on the seat. No, it's no reason for me to sit in the dark. <laughs> I'm with you. Okay? I have to I see. I have lights in my house. I, I burn almost every light. I, 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 you know, I need to uh, see. <laughs> you say the same thing. You burn every light. I, I That's okay. I want to see. I need to see. So the lights are on. I'm not burning no 25 watt bulb. I need to see what's going on in the house. So I have my lights on. You understand? So, yeah. but the light. Our light is supposed to shine, Pastor. That's it. Apostle, we're supposed to be the light. We're not supposed to have the light sitting on underneath the bushel. No, we're not. We're the light. Not. How are people going to see the light if we're sitting in darkness? Well, the Bible said don't be caught without that lamp. If you if you caught and you don't have that light, you're in trouble. You ain't got no oil in your lamp? <laughs> None, none whatsoever. So and the bridegroom is coming and you ain't got no oil? <laughs> you lost. You lost. Oh my goodness gracious. Goodness. Oh. What we gonna do? I ain't got no oil. What we gonna do? You don't have no oil. You lost that. So don't, don't get caught. That's what I'm saying. Don't get caught in these reinventions of church. So you know, take me back to the basis because some of this... this the take me back to the basic math because some of this algebra and, and all this other new math y'all got going on, you know, two and two is still four. It sure is. I don't right. care how you sep how you dividing uh, 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 five from one or whatever this new math is and y'all coming up, y'all went down the street around the corner and then y'all got to four. Yeah, they have a new math system that they're teaching here in Louisiana and it's the, the kids are just... Oh, it's here in Georgia too. Oh, okay. It, it, I think it's, it's starting actually from the south and going back into the Midwest. I have no reason why, but nevertheless. Uh, my kids come home with homework, and one of my daughters is, is a school teacher, so uh -huh. I'm like, you go to her because I can't help you. It just, it just ain't going to work. I can't help you with that. And when I went back to college, everything had changed. I'm like, yeah, we didn't do all this, you know, before. Mm -hmm. So time changes, and people change the sin never changes. Sin has been from day one, and it could, it's, it's continuing. People say, oh, it's getting worse. Well, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. Amen. Just the players. The Just the players. Yeah. There you go. That's it. There's nothing new under the sun. Yeah. But but I need you before you get off the phone, and I know you got to leave in about twelve minutes. I need you to get me back to base. Bishop told me you would be with me for forty minutes, and you had to leave. Um, okay. But if you can stay for the full hour, I would appreciate it. But if you have to leave, I understand that too. But listen, okay. get me back to the basics because this new stuff here you're talking about, I'm scared following that foolishness. I end up in hell. And then what I'm going to tell Jesus when I meet him, well, you know, down at Sister ABC Church, they didn't yeah. teach that. They was teaching me that I could smoke, drink, tip, dip. I could do whatever I wanted to do because the sin was already paid for when you was on the cross. They call it inclusion. So since it was paid for, I might as well do what I was doing, and I was just going to remind you that you paid for it. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what 
Now what do I do when I see him? So I'm going to tell Jesus this and this is going to be acceptable? I'm serious. That's why, that's why the Bible is for our learning. Because in Second Timothy, the, the third um, chapter, 1 through 9, he said there will be terrible times in these days. Mm -hmm. And people will be lovers of themselves, which we said, lovers of money. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you cannot go in these churches without giving four or five offerings. You just can't. And I'm looking around like, I just gave you some money. And then, you know, well, we need it for this phone and this phone. You know, that should be something separate um, that you come to the members with. It, it shouldn't be in the congregation where there's people, it might be new people in there, or people visiting, that are saying, well, I'm not coming back here because they keep asking for money. Mm -hmm. That should be in a separate time. Like, uh, you know, within a... Um, and you have a council or you have a uh, prayer or you have, um, we used to, to ask for like a building fund, like when we were right. for or something like right, that. Right, right. Like bring it amongst new members, bring it around a thing four or five or six times, it's just ridiculous. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or unless you say, here, this is for the building fund and this is for, you know. Yeah, for, all at the same know. time. This 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 box yeah. is for your ties, this is for your offering, this is for the building fund. But it's all done at one time. Yeah, instead of three or four different yes. types of, as you just said, the sermon, then you go ask again. I mean, okay. I'm like, okay, I got you. I understand exactly what you're saying. I understand. That's, that's but I want to meet Jesus, and I need you to tell me how to get there. I understand exactly. about the offering part. I don't have a problem with that. I understand it. Get me back to Jesus. <laughs> but that's, that, that's, where, that's where Second Timothy comes in and telling us how, how we can be pushed away from Jesus is because we're both going proud and abusive to uh, to each other, mm -hmm. uh, disobedient to our parents and ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self control, not lovers of the good, but lovers of ourselves again, as we as we said, mm -hmm. and we're conceited and uh, lovers of pleasure. That's another thing. It's how we, the only way we're going to get back to how we should be mm -hmm. is to start studying our Bible. Amen. Because we study to show ourselves approved. Amen. If you, start, if you have to start from the beginning and read that Bible and see the mistakes that, that, that all of these people made in the Bible, because most of every, every book is about a mistake somebody made and how they got through it. David got through his adultery. Mm -hmm. and, and Moses got through his um, stuttering. He, could, he, he didn't want to do what God said because he's Southern. And Noah got through, he tried to get the people on, but the people didn't want to go. That's another way of saying you have to listen to, to a God's voice, somebody that is truly sent. Mm -hmm. Now, you might say, well, how do we know if they're truly sent? It'll be something within you. That's why I said God never stopped talking to us. We have to start from the basics and go back to having new convert classes instead of just letting people in the church. You have to you have to tell them that they have to tithe and they and they have to pray and they have to come to church and worship with other believers. Amen. You think, oh, I I do it at home. I watch it on TV. That's that's where everything's going. Is oh, I'm gonna watch it on a uh, live stream. My church yeah. has live stream. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna watch it on TV. I'm not going this week because I just don't feel like going because of this or that. Mm -hmm. Not a legitimate reason. Because that's why we have live stream. You have live stream because maybe you're sick or maybe something came up that you can't come. But we should be in church fellowshipping with other believers. Amen. We should be reading our Bible. We should be praying. Amen. We should be um, going out ministering to other people. We should uh, have a mission department where we're going out helping other people. Amen. Um, uh, doing things for children. The, Bi the Bible says that Jesus has bring the children to me. Mm -hmm. People... People, it's so many people that are hurting children and misusing them. That's the only way we're going to get back is if our minds change. Yes. We have yes. to have a mindset of Christ. Come on. Now that's what I'm talking about. That's it. Getting our mind right. right. Pulling that's down right. the strongholds. Yes. And letting the glorious oh. light to come on. Because if that light, once the light come on, all the darkness is going to go away. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but if we don't get if we don't get rid of those those strongholds those Delilah spirits that want to be in control mm. and how many 
of them do do we know of? I know several of those. They they want to be in control of you. Yeah, they want to control everything, every aspect in your life. Oh yeah, and it's it's people in the church. Um, they they're the ones that that are pulling people in, telling them, you know, you you can't do this, but you can do this. It's okay to do this when the Bible says it's not okay. That's a, that's a Delilah and a, a Jezebel spirit itself mm -hmm. to, to change around the word of God. The Bible says that the God is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. And how how can He be wrong? He's his not wrong. Come back wild and come back void. Mm -mm. So His word is what we should live on. What we should uh, uh, strive on. Every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's true. There's no lie in Him. Yes. Yes, no lying him. He can't. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Not he even. Can't he can't. That is impossible. That's why he's God. He cannot lie. And he's not a man. Yes. It's immutable. <laughs> that will not happen. <laughs> I know it. And if, and if we want to make it to heaven, we have to start with a foundation. And like you yes. said, That foundation is going to hold up everything that, that comes at us. Come on. Everything that, as you build in the church, there's going to come up the he say, she say, and, and the, um, you know, the slacking members or the members that don't want to give, the members that, you know, are coming there to look for somebody. It's, they're, they're most I call them the looky-loo spirits. Yeah. I'm going to use that one. Yeah, it's free. Okay. Go ahead. Looky loo. They looking. They looking for this. They looking over here. But they ain't never looking at the world. They just, what you, what's going on over here? Sit down with your that's little happy exactly. self and let's get it. Let's work this thing out and get you some that's word. True. Get the word that's in you instead of around you. <laughs> get it yeah. in you. Yeah. And, and, and repent. Mm -hmm. Repent. Mm -hmm. Once, mm -hmm. once they repent and that's in their heart, that's truly in their heart. Mm -hmm. And they place their faith in Jesus Christ. Then He's going to help them too. Now, he's, oh, he's the guy. He's the teacher. Yeah, he's help you. Yeah, we're just teacher. leading them to okay. where he's at. Where we're just putting the cookies on the table where the kids can get it. There you go. But he's the teacher. He's the one that changes the heart. That's what. That's exactly what I was going to say. He'll change it, but you have to want him to. Exactly you because you. Exactly because you fell in love with him. That that's the only reason why you stopped drinking, cussing, whole monging, and all the other favorite activities you, you used like to do. You because you, you fell in love with Jesus, and it was greater than than your fleshly than your flesh. You found the greater one. That's why the come on here, somebody. The greater one is in you. There's no greater love. Hey. Yes. Hmm. He's our Lord and our Savior. He's in us. And what does he want for us? Only the best. Yes. He that, that, that all of these people outside of the church and inside of the church form against you. That's why the Bible says it can't prosper. Because you have him in you. You mm -hmm. have that full armor. Yes. From the head to the soul. You got it on you. Amen. Amen. You got it on you. Amen. Now, that, now that's good news. That's good news. Yeah, that's like that good water. Give me that water to drink. And you'll never thirst again. <laughs> never, never. Never. As long as you believe and obey that word. And trust me, I've been young and and I'm I'm not about to, to croak over, I hope not. But I'm at an age where I see my sin and then I say, wait, 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 wait. That's, that's not what I want to do. Let me turn around. Let, let me do it back this way. Mm -hmm. But trust me, it comes. It comes right in my face. It's not what? like I don't that I don't sin. I sin just like anybody else. But you have to repent. But you know, but let's 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 break it down a little bit further than that. Before it actually is formed, it comes to the mat. That thought, yes, it and it attacks. It starts. It starts. The, it, the process is here, but actually doing it, carrying it out. That's an afterthought. That's a byproduct. It, it, the sin was yes. committed here. The lust was here. It was formed here. Yes. So that's yes. why your thought life. He said, "He that keeps his mind stayed on him, he'll keep him in perfect peace." So we just got to begin to line up with that. And then everything else, and 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 that mind stand on Jesus. It shall help with that anxiety, that fear, that worry, 
You that that the enemy that. comes in to to you know comes in and 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 lay a guilt trip on you. Something that happened fifteen years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. all of the above. It's happened many times again, and I have to stop and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. What about that blood? That precious blood mm-hmm. that was shed on that cross for me. Should I still be condemned by that, Mm-mm. or should I? As I already repented and put it at the cross, should I let it go? Can, it's hard to let go, but God forgives us as far as the east is from the west. And we have to remember that. Mm-hmm. But that don't mean to just continuously, continuously do it. That's, that's, that's again, where the church is messing up. It's telling us, oh, it's okay, you just go ask God for forgiveness. And yeah, that is very true. Mm-hmm. That's very true. We can ask God for forgiveness. But don't just continue to do the same sin over and over and over because he'll turn you over to a reprobated mind. And that's not what that's not what nobody wants. Because once he does that, it's no going back. So that's mm. what I teach, teach the, the young people now is that you're going to, things are going to be wrong to you that you know that's not right. All marijuana is just a plan or, 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 you know, just having sex just one time to make sure that that's the person you want to be with. That's not that's not legitimate. And that's not in the Bible. That's not biblical at all. You mm-hmm. know that's what these kids say. That's how they talk. Oh, I love this one. You know, weed is a natural product, so I don't understand what the what the problem is. God made it, so it's natural. I said, get out of here with that foolishness. <laughs> Well, well, if we're going to deal with it, and you know, all of it, because it's, it's not like one sin is greater than the other. Sin is sin, and God doesn't say this is a big sin, this is a little sin. It's sin. That's He just characterized it as sin. So I would say this: anything that wants to alter our mood, our thinking, mm-hmm. it seems like it wants to replicate the essence of the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost takes you to a place that. You never been. You never experienced. That's why it's the super on your natural. Yeah. That experience, yeah. that anointing experience, when he comes in, when the glory of God uh, hovers over you, yeah. saturates you, and separates you from everything, time, space. So it seems to me that the, 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 the perversion of all these other activities that we're trying to escape from our problems is trying to duplicate the anointing experience. Yes. But again, we have to ask, we have to ask him in our heart because he can guide us in our decisions. He mm-hmm. can protect us. He can protect us physically and spiritually. Yeah. Because every, every day it's something that wants to purge you. It's some kind of demon or, or spirit that wants to purge you. It can't get in you if you're a Christian, but it wants to purge you. As long as you're continuously asking the Holy Spirit to, to, to stay with me and, and stay within me, he's going to fight those things off for you. Mm-hmm. Just, like, just like the angel came to and he said, oh, the God answered your prayer a long time ago, but we were fighting with the, 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 the Prince of... Um, Biology, yeah. Of the air. I'm, look, I can't even talk. <laughs> You're um, all right. <laughs> we were fighting with them, we so it's not that God that God won't answer. Yeah. And that He won't send us help. Is that we have to continue, just like He did, continue to pray and continue to ask the Holy Spirit to stay with us and continue to keep our eyes on God. Because as soon as you take your eyes off of Him. Then you got your eyes on something else that's not of him. So anything mm. that's not of him is not good. So no, it's not. Keep your eyes on him. Mm-hmm. Well, you know that brings up the analogy of Peter walking on the water. Yeah. Yeah. And. uh Everybody said, "Oh, he he walked on the water." I said, "No, he didn't walk on the water. He walked on the word." That's right. Exactly. He went by the word, and that's the only reason why he had confidence to do it. But then he took his eyes off, mm-hmm. and then you think. And that's what happens so, to us. Oh yeah, I've done it many times. I've taken my eyes off Christ because I fell in love, or I oh, took my eyes off Christ apostle, you I, apostle, you. No, you have breakfast with Jesus. At, no, apostle, no. Oh no! Now I'm, 
Oh my God! I don't even know how they got that one out of. The, I, I, don't, I don't know how they conjured that one up. A multitude, that, a multitude of, of, oh my God, Peter! They be lying. People be lying. Peter be lying on people. Don't know what it was. You have you have no idea what that was. Yeah. Because that thorn was in the Exactly. Yeah. 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 You know what he wrote? Don't nobody know what he wrote. You got an idea what he wrote. I believe he wrote. Y'all was in there with her doing it. So no, I, 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 I believe he wrote down everybody's name. Yeah, you was there Wednesday. You was there Thursday. I believe he put down everybody. And they was all there. They saw their name. And that's why they got oh, up and left. My, my, my. <laughs> that's my, just my, my rendition. That is exactly. That's, hey, that should be a book wrote. What he wrote. Mm -hmm. I think he wrote every one of their names down. Like, why are you in front of me? Cause exactly. He said, "Now, who were your accusers? It wasn't on there." That's why they left. You can take your eyes off Christ, but don't try to remove a speck out of somebody's eye. You got a boy in your own. That's no, you got a tree. You ain't got a beam. You got a tree in your eyeball. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You do it a boat, a whole boat. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But yeah. it's it's good to know. I'm gonna ask you this, and then we're gonna wrap it up because you touched on it lightly. I, I, you know, I enjoy your uh, not only your candor, but your being transparent. And a lot of times, the people in the five fold, again, they have this wall. Not all of the transparency and i really get on my husband a lot because lord knows he's so transparent we had greens last night yeah we had greens last night y'all <laughs> man everybody don't need to know that <laughs> well, he's a great man of God. yes he is and i love him dearly but i'm just saying as far as being transparent a lot of a lot of people are not um have a problem with it but the word the word itself is what makes you transparent because they got to and i do understand being trans i i, I get it because i get mad at myself i'm like i really didn't mean to share all of that but yeah. but that word it, it 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 you know they got to see jesus in you so if they're not seeing jesus then something's wrong yeah That's yeah true. So yeah. take me to the repentance part. Can you give me a definition on that? And then I'm going to let you give a word of encouragement to the people. Okay. As far as repentance, repentance is first something that you have to want to do. You have to realize your sin. Mm -hmm. And you have to want to repent. You have to, to take everything inside of you and you have to admit to God, hey, look, I've done this, this, and this. And my heart is heavy mm. for what I'm doing. And you have to to truly take everything out of yourself and repent to him. Yes. It can be, oh, God, I'm sorry. You have to truly repent to him because he knows. Yes. He knows. That yes. He's down on the floor crying and boohooing. He knows that you fake. Yeah. But when you truly give yourself to Christ and you truly repent, that's mm -hmm. when doors open for you. Amen. Those, you've, you've closed all the doors around you by doing what you want to do. Mm -hmm. But when you repent and you start walking in the glory of God and you start walking in his grace, then God will start opening doors that you didn't even know was around you. Amen. You start opening doors and windows and shafts and everything. <laughs> you start opening the roof, anything. Amen. So get in there and get into you. He has to be able to get into your heart. Excellent. Because if he's not in your heart, he's not in you. Amen, Apostle. You can think you're a Christian, but you have to feel it too. You have to feel that spirit. Amen. 
Yeah. Amen. So would you give an encouraging word today? Because I always like to leave people with hope, no matter, because we never know what someone's going through, especially during these particular times. It's, and, and the so you know, especially it's getting towards the close of the end of the year, suicide rates go up. People's yeah. expectation levels, you know, they're expecting different things and, and, and situations are not matching. Their situation is not meeting their expectation and there's a gap, there's a void. So it's, these are some stressful times that people are living in. And a lot of times people don't know how to cope. No, they don't. And, I'm, and, and Christians too. I'm not just people without Christ, but with Christ who, who love the Lord, but they, they be like the scripture said, you know, he said, where is your faith? He said, pray for my faith. Pray that I, I be, pray that I believe. Heal my daughter. No, I believe. He said, you believe? Yeah, but Lord, help my unbelief. Pray for my unbelief. So could we, could you give us that background for, for about two minutes, please? Yeah. Thank you. And, and, I, and I want to start with the youth first. I, I want to break it up. Yes, ma'am. Because a lot of our youth are discouraged. Because, again, the church is, is not having enough activity for them and doing enough stuff to show them who Christ is. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids are saying, how do I know that there's a God? Mm. That's, that's where our Bibles come in. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where the parent comes in. And if you don't have a parent that will teach you, just pick up your Bible and start to read it. Mm -hmm. And and as you read those words, God will start putting something in your heart. We can't see God. We can't wave at him. We can't feel him. It has to be in our heart. And mm -hmm. it, until they have that love of God in their heart, they're not going to be able to cope with the world. Yes. The world is just is, is evil. And, and the world belongs to Satan. It doesn't belong. It, it's not for us. Heaven is our home. Yes. So we have to start with our children, keep them in the prayer line, or keep them, or, or if, if you have a uh, believing parent, speak over your children and anoint your children. But if that parent, if those children don't have that kind of parent, then those children need to, to get their Bibles and start to read it. And if we can get more programs in the church to, to, to start teaching the children about God and about Jesus and about the way that they should act. If we could get, if if we could get a lot of kids to just read the book of Proverbs, it teaches us how we should live, yes. what we shouldn't do, and mm -hmm. how we shouldn't do it. Amen. If we get that into them, that's like a seed. Yes. If that seed is planted in them, then it'll grow. And they'll, they'll have a sense of wanting to believe. Uh -huh. and, and wanting to be directed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then to the, the young adults, I have a um, a ministry called Girls Worth Waiting For, but it's for boys, too. Mm. But we're, we're saying you're worth waiting for as far as sex is concerned. Amen. If we could get more groups like that and tell these girls, you don't have to jump in the bed with the guys. You don't have to do any kind of sexual act with a man for him to love you. Amen. If he loves you, he'll treasure you. He'll treasure everything about you. You'll mm. be his little princess until he makes you a queen. That's something else we need to instill in these children. They feel like, oh, I have to do this. And then once they do it and, and the person's gone, then they feel a sense of suicide and um, of not being wanted and Rejection. being lonely. So yes. we, have to, we have to get programs to keep their minds off of these things and keep their minds on Christ. And if they, even if they have sin and, and, and they have had sex or they encounter some kind of sexual act, they can come back to Christ and become a virgin. He'll close it up. Amen. 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 And that's what that still comes from you wanting to do it. And you saying, Hey, I made a really big mistake. I gave something that belongs to to another man that God already has in store for me. I've gave it to somebody else. And now I want God to, to heal me, close it up and make me whole again. Make me the woman of Beautiful. God that he wants me to be. And the same with the young men. Beautiful. They can do it too. They can, Amen. They can stop being promiscuous and, and wanting to sleep with every woman. As long as we have some activities and things in church for the kids to do, I think they better get their minds off. Amen. Off of Amen, Apostle. And to, to, the, to the people that's more near our age and um, that's been in the church, we have to get on. We have to get back in the church. And if if we have to start all over, even if we've been in church 50, 
40 years, 30 years, whatever. We have to start all over again. That's what we have to do. Mm -hmm. We have to get our mind set on Christ. Amen. And not on the world. Yes. Not on what this person is doing or the deacon is doing or not doing. We have to set our mind on Christ. Mm -hmm. If our mind is not set on him, he can't prepare a table for us. Amen. He said, I'll prepare a table for you in the presence, in the presence of, your of your enemies. So how can he prepare a table when your mind's over here? Come on. You have to be at the table with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He can't do anything for you if your mind is, is not on him. Amen. So that, that's basically, um, with all age groups, we have to get our mind on Christ. And we have to start by praying and start reading that Bible and start studying it. Amen. Well, we gotta open doors for us. Apostle, I just, I mean... I can't believe where the time went, but I truly, truly, truly enjoyed you, my baby. Oh, thank you. And we and I, and and and, and I, I'm going to have to let you go because we got to get off. I'm getting the signal for my producer, but I want to thank you. I want to thank, thank you. acknowledge uh, Apostle Alicia Hudson. God bless you, and and we appreciate you. you. And I will call you shortly. Thank you so so much. Be blessed. Okay,